Sonable has just released the Smart Gate plugin, and it's a bit weird that they're releasing it now because I actually thought that a gate would make the most sense to put AI in as a first plugin. But they're doing it as some kind of a last because they already have all the other plugins. Anyway, they've given me early access so that I could film this video. So let's take a look at it. When it comes to gating, I've seen a lot of engineers still basically drawing out the gating, uh, either with automation or by simply editing out all the parts that are not needed, for instance, on toms. And the reason why they're doing that is because normal gates, they do function, but they do not function perfectly. And I mean, there are some features now in software with filters and stuff, but I don't think it's enough. And I'm really excited to see what AI can bring to the table. If it's AI, maybe it's machine learning, maybe it's a different term. Sonobalizing. With SmartGate, Sonobal has developed not only a new AI-powered plugin, but an advanced methodology for gating. Unlike conventional gates, which are purely triggered by input level, SmartGate's artificial intelligence makes it content aware. And that makes a lot of sense. I'm wondering how that, how that AI actually does that. I mean, speech recognition and stuff is possible, but it has to do with real time and open before before it knows that it needs to open. Now for the first time, gating can be as simple as selecting a target source from a drop-down menu. Whether you're targeting vocals, electric guitar, piano, or a suite of other options, the result is a gate that delivers reliably, even if a target source varies in level or if a competing instrument is louder than the signal you want to keep. That is indeed sometimes a problem. I have seen situations where I received recordings uh, where the hi-hat was louder on the snare mics than the snare. That's a problem. You cannot gate that. There are ways, but I mean, it's a problem. And generally my approach to that is go back to the recording and do it again. But that's not always possible. So sometimes you have to work with material that's there. Now we're not going to um, read this all. I'm just going to try it out. And I think I am making a few people at Sonable a bit nervous now, but still I'm going to just figure this thing out. So welcome to Smart Gate. Take the tour. It's good that they're doing a tour on here for idiots like me. Get started by choosing a target source. The gate will only react to the chosen target and ignore other signal components. Oh, but they have targets built in. So if I want to gate, I don't know, a weird instrument, Maybe it's not in the list, I don't know. After selecting profile, choose a section of your audio material where the target source is present and start the playback. Smart gate will automatically start looking for the chosen source. And okay, so it knows what it's looking for, then it's going to identify it for real. And you can also use it as a conventional gate with no, okay. Activity function shows the activity of the chosen in an out waveform. Okay, so what it basically does is whenever it sees that it needs to open the gate, it basically amplifies the level for the sidechain that has to open the gate then. And you can turn that up so that it's, yeah. I think, I don't I don't know. Threshold, okay, and a tolerance. Set a transition area between the closed and open state of the gate. So that's timing. Oh no, yeah, okay. Yeah, so you can, if, if that varies a little bit, you can create some tolerance, I think. But yeah, then you can also alter your threshold. Yeah, but it doesn't have a threshold. Or does it have a threshold? It has a threshold, okay. Global impact controls the overall impact of the gate processing. Band suppression. Oh, so you can also say like, hey, maybe suppress. Oh, that's cool. So with gating, you can choose to fully gate it, but also to just partially gate it in terms of level. Like a closed gate basically means minus 10 is what you can define. And here you can also define that per band is what I'm seeing here. External sidechain. And mode, gating and ducking. Yeah. Okay. So this is it. And I have a few uh, pieces of a drum kit uh, in here. And uh, yeah, let's just check it out. The song is from uh, um, um, Rick Ashley, I think. Or was it The Root? So now it's functioning as a traditional gate. Here you can also already see like, okay, this is the kick and this is the snare. So we need to put the threshold higher. Yeah, it's still opening on the... Oh, that's the tolerance setting, so we actually need to... Okay, and then of course make this a lot longer.
Okay, let's have it do its magic. So we've got a kick. Looking for the kick in your audio. Well, have fun with it. Oh, that was quick. We're also not seeing the snare anymore in this uh, graphic. Look at how low I have the threshold set. Like, And also, it grabs that attack pretty well as well. Let me rearrange the mics a little bit because I think there's a lot of symbols on there. I want to make it more difficult for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it a raw signal of both a kick and a snare. And what you can now see after resetting the plugin is that the kick and the snare are both equally as loud. Look. So there's a the snare and there's your kick. Both, everything is on the same signal. And what I want to figure out now, because I, I'm stress testing this thing, People at Sonable, you know who you sent it to. <laughs> I want to see if it can now also ignore the snare. Like the snare is really apparent now. It's a direct signal. This is not something that will happen in a normal uh, uh, life. Oh, it's already done it. Yeah, of course, when, I, when I'm fully doing it. But it's... Okay. But this is coming, like... So if I overdo it, then yes, of course, but... This is all the threshold I need. Oh! Oh! It's starting to get into trouble. Oh no, that's just my release. No, it's not opening on the snare there. Oh, that's my release. Sorry. Is it opening on the snare? No, it's not opening on the snare, right? Let me mute the kick in here. Let's see if it wants to open on the snare now. So now we're playing just the snare in there. No, it doesn't detect the snare. While the snare's like really loud in there. Okay, let's turn this thing around now. So, same signal, and now I want to know if it can detect just the snare. Oh, it's already doing it. It's already doing it. It's literally already doing it. I mean, the only bleed you're hearing from the kick is because the kick is in that release. This is the way forward for gating. Really, this is it. This is it. Content-aware gating. I want to poke holes in this thing. Because I don't believe that this is possible, actually. Apparently it is. Maybe it is not that difficult comp computationally. Who knows? Let's see what it does on the toms. In this case, the toms would be easier. But wait a second, what does it do in the toms with the kick and the snare in the same signal? So I'm feeding the kick signal in here now to see if it triggers on the kick. No, no, it doesn't trigger on the kick. No, that's just the release that we're hearing. This really is the application of AI that the industry needed. 
10 years ago, 20 years ago. This was the first thing we needed in AI. Like, I don't know what you all think, of course, but I think that this is a big deal. This makes things so much easier and fluent in, in your workflow. And it does set up itself. Like, it, it does the AI thing of saving time as well. But it also does something that other plugins cannot do. Feed it, like, like okay, let's feed the same snare, kick snare combination into the Pro G from FabFilter, which is, I hope we can agree on, is also a good gate. I'm already pretty sure that it go it's going to take me a lot more effort, but is it even possible? Like, I probably have to sidechain in on the low frequencies, and then doesn't do it as smooth. And that's first of all because I'm triggering on the low frequencies, which are slower. So, and if I want to trigger on high frequency, I'll always have that kick in here. Uh, snare, sorry. Maybe here. It's already not possible. And, and the other way around as well. If I just want to trigger the snare, I don't know. Then we have the snare. But whenever the snare does a, a small build up, like this, like over here, it already gets into a problem. And I know these are not the timing settings. I want to make one thing clear. <laughs> the timing settings that I've used in this whole video with both SmartGate and the Pro-G aren't the timing settings I would normally choose, but I want to focus on the triggering of the gate. I mean, with a lot of work, I think it's possible in the Pro-G as well, but with a lot of tinkering and stuff, I think you can get pretty far with isolating these two signals. But on the SmartGate, it's so easy and it's so... Yeah. And I know this video now looks very, very biased. So what I want to say is that Sonnable did not sponsor this video, did not have any saying in what I can or cannot say in this video, but they are extremely nervous for my videos because they know that I am very critical towards them. I've actually said that to them as well because I think what they are doing is really great and I'm super enthusiastic about it, but having a whole bunch of people in the media or an influencer or whatever, being very enthusiastic about you can make you lazy. And I don't want Sonnable to become lazy. I really want to keep them on their toes. So they're always very nervous. They're sweating. They're, they have elevated heart rates whenever I make a video. And you can really verify that with Sonnable. So they're definitely not paying me. And I can do like, if I want to do this, I can, I can do that. Like, so how do I make my money then? Well, first of all, with ads on YouTube. Uh, and second of all, I use affiliate links. So I'm affiliated with Plugin Boutique, which, which is a shop that sells plugins. And the Sonable plugin is available on Plugin Boutique. I will link it with my affiliate link in the description down below. And what happens after you purchase a plugin, for instance, SmartGate, after clicking that link, is that a little bit of your purchase gets kicked back to me. Like if I'm enthusiastic about a product and I'm convincing other people to buy it as well, simply bringing in a lot of revenue for the plugin company, I think it's fair to just have it drip a little bit at my side as well. We're not talking about huge amounts. However, I've never asked all of you how you think about this. So please leave a comment down below if you think it's fair to use direct affiliate links to products that I really like. And I have a bit of two split golden rules about this. First of all, I never want to make you buy a product that I personally do not believe in with the information that I have at that moment. Like I cannot know everything, but I want to personally feel good about you making the purchase that I'm recommending. And second of all, I also want to have you feel good about it. So I'm always encouraging you to 
try out something before you're going to buy it. Even if that would make me miss out on the affiliate income because you're coming back later to the website and the cookie is expired or whatever. I think that's more important. So that's one thing that I want to add. Another way that this channel is being financed is by members. So if you want to become a member and have access to playlists like early access and exclusive content, make sure to join the channel using the join button down below. And of course, this channel is being supported by ad revenue, as I said, which is being generated by the viewers. So if you want to help with that, check out an interesting video over here. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing. Don't forget to subscribe, like stuff, and bye-bye.